What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the pandemic update for Monday, October 30th, 2023. That's right. We are almost done with October. Tomorrow's Halloween. Then we start November. Starting off with our first headline today, has the winter COVID variant arrived? Here's why experts are closely monitoring the JN.1 strain. Yes, we have mentioned JN.1 several times. It is a lineage off of the BA 2.86 variant, and it's one that's concerning. It's one that seems to be uh, spreading pretty quickly. We got Halloween. Then in the United States comes Thanksgiving, and then around the world come all of the other winter holidays, which uh, it's not a good thing for COVID. COVID and holidays, they don't mix. They spread all around big time, and as you know, each year around the holidays, we tend to get a big surge. Throw in a new variant at the same time, which in this point is JN.1, and it's not a good combination. It's something a lot of people are concerned about. It's something I am concerned about, and it's something we really need to keep an eye on. And I think as we head towards December, I think that's going to be a wave. I, th I think at this point it's safe to say JN.1 could definitely be a wave. All right, here's some bad news. Federal coverage of COVID drugs is ending. That's right, the federal coverage is now ending. Here's why it matters. The oral antivirals reduce the risk of hospitalization or death from COVID-19 and until now have been free for patients through the federal government. The Biden administration and drug makers have taken steps to ensure access to the treatments after they move to the commercial market. Yeah, if you did not see, Pfizer is going to be like over $1,300 if you don't have good pain insurance or if your insurance does not cover it. I think this alone, because there's a lot of people in this country that cannot afford insurance or don't have insurance, I think this alone could help drive hospitalizations higher, as well as that JN.1 variant that I just mentioned. Uh, this is not good. I get it, the budget's running thin for the United States right now, but we really need to, we really need to find a way to make this more affordable, because guess what? COVID has not gone away. I say this almost daily. I say it in almost every video. COVID has not gone away. Cases are elevated right now. They're only going to go higher during the holidays. And, you know, one hospitalization or one drug that someone can't afford, it's going to break someone. And it's just not good. Yes, it, it, that shouldn't be a thing. Weekly U.S. COVID update. New cases. In the United States, this is for the United States. This is from BNO. They do their weekly update. New cases last week. 163,121. Yikes. That's uh, still far too high. Remember, winter wave, it's only just getting ready to set in. And yet, here we are. We're still this high. And these are only cases that we know of. A lot of people don't test. A lot of people don't report the at-home test. At least there is some tiny bit of good news. The average is 195,000. That's actually down by 22,000. States reporting 50 out of 50. That's good. The number in hospital is down by 497 to 13,036. In the ICU, 1,543. That number's up slightly. That's not good. New deaths, close to another 1,500 deaths. Ugh. Remember, we just passed 1.2 million recently. 1,478 to be exact is the new number from last week. The average is over 1,500. And then they say the breakdown for this week's case numbers. Reports from 30 states, 83,086. Estimate from 20 states, over 80,000. Today's total, yesterday's total that they reported, is down 18% from the previous week, but it's going to start to go back up in the coming week. I mean, Halloween alone... That should definitely start to cause more cases. Then they say, with a few exceptions, cases continued on a downward trend in most states, which will likely continue until the winter wave begins. Hospital admissions were unchanged, about 16,200 last week. 
deaths with July cases remain high with more than 1,000 deaths for the seventh week in a row, taking the U.S. total to 1.2 million. More than 10,000 deaths were reported during the last two months. All this, might I add, while the media doesn't report on it, and everyone thinks, oh, COVID's over. Well, hello, COVID's not over. Last two months, 10,000 deaths. Remember, COVID has four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. So, yeah, we're not even into the peak season for COVID yet. You know, the big one, the winter wave, and already just the last two months alone, 10,000 deaths. Totally unacceptable. Speaking of COVID causing issues in India, strokes and cardiac arrest increased among young since COVID. Yikes, that's not a good headline either. Let's take a look at today's look at the air quality. And air quality, you know, it's not great in many places. Look along the immediate coast of the East Coast. Still some yellows showing up. Uh, interior New England's not doing too bad. A little bit of elevated levels in Iowa. Not sure what that's about. I mean, it's not terrible. But then we come to the West Coast. This is terrible. From California through Oregon, Washington, Idaho. You have some very bad air quality still from wildfires. You really could use a rainstorm right now. Not a flooding rainstorm, but you could use a decent soaking just to help cleanse the air, help moisten up the ground, and help with this uh, problem because it is not good. Uh, if you have to go outside and anywhere that's in these reds or even the oranges, I suggest wearing a high-quality mask. Let's take a look at heat-related illnesses. Looks like they have been updating on Mondays, so let's see what the deal is with that. Uh, still a few areas, not many. Some in the southwest, some in the south still. A couple in the northeast, not many. But, uh, yeah, it's still an issue. All right, let's take a look at this week's Walgreens update. Trust me, I know that just said 10-23. It updated. I just didn't update this page. Uh, here it is. National positivity trend. It's kind of a not-so-good thing and more reasons to believe that, hey, the winter wave is slowly setting in. Current week, 27.3% positive. Prior week, 26% positive. Difference of up 1.3%. Testing is just down ever so slightly. 11,752 total tests. Prior week is 11,994. And you can see on this chart, Things are going up ever so slightly. Given we started the wastewater update yesterday in the east, let's be fair, let's be friendly, let's start Walgreens in the west. We're not going to do every state in the country. I could actually do a whole video. We have done that before, where we've done a whole video just with Walgreens. So let's start in the west. We'll start with Alaska. We'll do, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 states. Alaska's positivity trend. Current week is 8.3%, the prior week was 6.3%, difference of 2.1% up, total test, 12 versus 16, testing's down, positivity's up, I think that's a result of testing. Uh, California, 29.5% positivity this week, prior week was 30.2%, difference of down, 0.6%, total test, 413 versus 577, yes, testing's way down, but the positivity still dropped, that's a legitimate drop. Organ positivity, 30.5% this week. Prior week was 21.2%. Difference of up 9.3%. Again, testing is down. So this is a product of testing being down. 59 tests this week versus 85 last week. Can we do Washington State? Yes, we can. Washington is 24.9%. This week, the prior week was 25.4%. Difference of down 0.6%. Testing is also down 213 versus 283. It's a legitimate drop. Let's go to Idaho. Idaho is bright red. I don't like seeing that. Idaho, 37.8% positivity this week. Prior week was 24.3%. Difference of up 13.5%. 37 tests versus 37. Same testing, so we're going with this is a legitimate rise. What's going on in Utah this week? 25.9% positivity this week. Prior week was 26.9%. Difference of down 0.9% total test. Same 108 versus 108. So this is a legitimate uh, drop. Take a look at Nebraska. Yikes. 
40.5% positivity this week. Prior weeks, 24.6%. Difference of up, 16%. And yes, testing's up too. 74 versus 61. Now this is definitely a legitimate rise, and I'm seeing so many more bright red areas. What's going on with Minnesota? 28% positivity this week. Prior week, 19.9%. Difference of up, 8%. That's a big increase, but testing is down. 161 versus 201. That's down by 40. We'll go with a combination of testing dropping and perhaps also maybe an increase in cases of some sort. Iowa positivity trend, 25.5% this week. Prior week, 14.3%. 11.2% increase. That's a big increase. 51 tests versus 56. Not a big drop in testing. I mean, they don't do much testing. I think that's a legitimate rise. How about we go over to Illinois? Yes, we can do Illinois. 29.9% this week, 30.1% last week. Difference of down 0.3%. 938 total tests. The prior week was 910. Let's head over to Ohio. Ohio is 30.8% this week. Prior week is 29.6%. Total test, 360. The prior week was 324. This is a legitimate rise. Testing is up, so... With positivity up too, that makes for a legitimate rise. Pennsylvania, my state, 29.5% this week. The prior week is 25.2%. Difference of up, 4.3%. Total testing, though, is 122 versus 147. It's a rise because of uh, testing being down ever so slightly. If it was a bigger rise, it would be a combination of both testing and rising cases. New York State. Yikes. Yeah, New York State's been continuously rising. I don't know what the deal is here because it's not following what's happening with the New York State reported data. 43.5% this week. The prior week's positivity was 38%. Difference of up 5.6%. And testing's up 248 versus 216. On Walgreens, it's a legitimate rise. Let's go down to Virginia. Virginia is 26.6% this week. The prior week was 22%. Difference of up, 4.6%. Total test, 319 versus 345. Uh, it's not a legitimate rise for cases, but it is up because testing is down. Let's just do one more state, then we'll do some more states tomorrow. we got to get to Connecticut because we couldn't do anything with Connecticut wastewater yesterday. So we got to release report something on the state of Connecticut. Connecticut's positivity rate is 24.7%. The prior week was 15.2%. That's a big rise. 9.5% and testing's up by 1. 93 versus 92. They don't do a lot of testing, but hey, this is a legitimate rise. Not going to look at any wastewater sites today. We will take a look at the latest variant information. HV.1 leads to way at 25.2%. Then EG.5 at 21.9%. FL151 at 12%, and then XVB116.6 at 9.2%. Taking a look at the latest number of uh, COVID hospital admissions, 16,186. New Jersey today, 431 people in the hospital, 20 people on a ventilator, 49 people in the ICU, discharges, 74 People have been discharged, which does not include deaths. And uh, taking a look now across the Delaware River, southeast Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia, I got a question yesterday. Why did I not include Philadelphia in the wastewater update? Give you two reasons. Number one, it's not on CDC website or wastewater scan, and the data on the Philadelphia website has not updated since September for wastewater. If it updates soon, I'll uh, include it in one of these videos. All right, daily EMS incidents for Sunday in Philadelphia was 717. However, we can also show you the weekend total. It was a busy weekend in Philadelphia. While yesterday was down, Saturday was up. So the total number of EMS incidents for the weekend was 1,582. And a lot of that is because Saturday they had 865 EMS incidents in my city. Whew, that's a busy day. All right, taking a look at what's going on right now in Montgomery County, which is just outside of Philadelphia, 15 EMS calls at the moment. I'm seeing cardiac emergencies. I'm seeing stroke. I'm seeing respiratory emergencies, cyclical episodes. Yeah, a lot of things going on. 
And looks like there are some things going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania as well. Now, taking a ride across the Pennsylvania Turnpike and up the New Jersey Turnpike to New York State. And we find that New York State, in the most recent update, reported 1,293 new cases of COVID. How about their hospitalizations? Their hospitalizations are currently at 1,256. Alrighty, folks, let's just uh, briefly do an international update. And then I do have a quick message for you. Uh, Russia cases are up 18%. Deaths are up 16%. Singapore cases up 16%. No deaths reported. Taking a look at New Zealand, cases up 3%. Ooh, I don't like this. Deaths are up 63%. 39 versus 24. And let's just do one more. How about Ireland? Cases are down 6% and deaths are up 64%. Alrighty, folks, tomorrow is Halloween. I know a lot of people will be celebrating Halloween. Therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to remind you just a couple things. If you feel the need that you're going to be outside giving out candy to the kids, number one, do it outside. Number two, make sure you're wearing an N95 or better mask when dealing with the kids as they come to your house. Uh, my best advice to you would be kind of skip it this year, but if you feel the need to do it, by all means, wear an N95 mask because, you know, COVID it is going around right now and you want to stay safe. You want to distance yourself. Maybe just leave a ball on your steps. Or back in 2020, some people made these shoots where they were given the candy through a shoot. Do whatever you have to do to stay safe, but if you must participate, again, just wear an N95 mask. If you're going to take your kid trick-or-treating, um, I know they should be wearing, you know, Halloween costume. Make sure your child's wearing a mask, too. And I don't mean a Halloween costume mask. I mean an N95 or kid mask of some sort. Because it's just the right thing to do. You want to keep them safe. And I know some neighborhoods, I know my neighborhood, for example, will be just loaded with kids on the sidewalk. Sidewalks will get crowded. You'll have to interact with other people. You'll have to interact with all, people of all ages. We want to keep each other safe. So let's have a safe Halloween tomorrow. Not only just for COVID. Let's just be safe in general. Be aware of your surroundings as to what's going on. Alrighty, folks. I will see you, of course, for another pandemic update again tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe down below. Share this with your friends or anyone that needs a wake-up call that the pandemic is not over. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday evening. Take care.